I have a quick and foolproof method to determine if a gun, an optic, or a piece of tactical gear is overhyped. Check the used market. If something gets a lot of hype, a lot of guys are going to buy it, but if a lot of them start showing up used, that means there's a disconnect between hype and reality. And that brings us to the topic of today's video. The Elcan Spectre DR1-4 is a variable power optic with a lever to quickly switch between one power and four times magnification. Instead of moving lenses around to change magnification level, the Spectre just rotates between two different prisms. Yep, this isn't a traditional magnified scope, it's actually two prism sights hot glued to a lazy Susan. So don't think of the Spectre as an LPVO, think of it as two ACOGs in a big tube. The Elcan has all the characteristics of a prism sight. It has a very short overall length relative to its magnification level, a wide field of view, quality glass, and a punishing eye box. Looking through the Spectre, I can simultaneously understand why it gets the hype that it does, and also why nobody likes it enough to keep one. The 1x setting on the Elcan is a true 1x magnification. The image has less distortion than any LPVO I've ever looked through. The view through the Elcan at 1x is perfectly flat and seems to be completely unmagnified, not 1.1x or 0.9x like a lot of LPVOs. This means you can shoot with it kind of like a red dot with both eyes open, particularly if you use the illumination, which is literally aimpoint bright. Not like a joke or a lazy comparison, it's actually bright as fuck. The super flat true 1x mode means you don't get any kind of double vision effect like with an LPVO or a Trigicon MRO. With a quick flick of the lever on the left side of the optic, you go straight to 4x. Do not pass 2x, do not collect $1700. At 4x, the Spectre has great field of view, not quite as wide as a 4x ACOG, but wider than a 3.5x ACOG, and much wider than any LPVO at 4x that I can find data for. The Spectre is available with a BDC reticle for 5.56 or 7.62 by 51 NATO, and it's got a lot of data built into the reticle. It has a built-in drop compensation for the appropriate caliber, a rangefinder that I do not know how to use, and area fire indicators for use with a machine gun. The Spectre also has a second illumination mode that lights up the whole BDC reticle instead of just the center dot. Use the red dot mode for close range 1x use and use the fully illuminated reticle for low light shots at 4x. The Spectre also has backup iron sights that can be attached to the top of the scope body. Since the merry-go-round of prisms take up so much space inside the optic body, the zeroing is all external. The elevation is controlled by a lockable wheel under the rear of the optic and the windage is controlled by a recessed turret on the left side. The zero adjustments move the whole optic, not just the reticle, so zeroing the scope zeroes the iron sights at the same time. There is also an accessory mounting point on the top of the Spectre. It can accept a small Picatinny rail section or an adapter to allow it to use Noblex pattern red dot sights, none of which are really any good. Wow, this thing sounds pretty good so far, right? Definitely worth the approximately $1,700 to $2,000 asking price. Well, it's still a prism optic, and prism optics still suck noodle. The eye box and eye relief on the Spectre is punishingly small, not just on the 4X, but also on the 1X, which has exactly the same eye position restrictions. A budget LPVO like the Burris RT6 has a huge amount of eye relief at 1X and a fairly forgiving eye box. It gets a lot tighter at 6X, but it's still more generous than the Elcan Spectre at either magnification level. The only upside to the Spectre is that you will never have to readjust your eye position after changing magnification levels. The only appeal prism sights have for me personally is their high magnification level relative to their size and weight. A 4X ACOG weighs about 15 ounces with a mount. The new Vortex Spitfire Gen 2 5X weighs about 10 ounces. My Burris RT6 is a middle-of-the-road LPVO in terms of size and weight. It comes in at 25 ounces with a skeletonized mount. The Spectre is about 23 ounces, so it's significantly heavier than a standalone magnified prism, but not bad compared to an LPVO. Do you really use the magnification levels between 1 and 6 on a standard LPVO? Maybe not if you're in a hurry. If you're at 1x and need to take a longer shot, you might as well crank that bitch up to 6. But if you're hanging around and looking at something for a while, you may want to dial back to 3x to get a compromise between magnification and field of view. I don't know, that's pretty much theoretical. I can imagine it happening, but it's never happened to me. The eye box isn't the only fly in the Spectre's ointment. The backup irons are really hard to use. They're basically pistol iron sights, but they're very close to your face. Try holding your handgun two inches in front of your face and using the sights. It's pretty hard to do. It's not a huge deal since they're for emergencies only, so who really cares? 
The mount for the Spectre is also fairly bulky, which can be a problem depending on where you mount it. It could interfere with your charging handle. If I mount it all the way to the rear to mitigate the eye relief issues, the charging handle is almost completely blocked. Mounted a slot or two forward allows me more access to the charging handle, but the arms levers still block the charging handle on the right side. You could use a huge extended lever ambidextrous charging handle to get around this, but those cause their own interference problems with body armor and LBE. So the Spectre looks great on paper, and great if you're just hanging out at the range, but the restrictive eye box causes a serious usability problem. Shooters who don't really mind crowding up on the gun probably won't mind it as much as I do. I'm also pretty big. Even if you're a smaller dude or you shoot nose to charging handle, you're still going to be affected by eye relief and eye box. Sometimes you shoot standing, sometimes prone. Both of those have different head positions. Sometimes you're wearing body armor or a backpack or maybe both. And sometimes you're using night vision. These are all scenarios where a red dot is a great option, and the thing is, prism optics are not red dots. 1x prisms are not red dots, even if they have good eye relief. Good eye relief is not good enough. You don't use the term eye relief when talking about an aim point because it just doesn't apply. The 1x mode on an Elcan Spectre is not a replacement for a red dot. So let's talk about night vision. The Spectre has great glass quality with fantastic light transmission for use with night vision. Unfortunately, it has the same problem as the Trigicon MRO. It does not focus at the same distance as your surroundings. You can focus on the target, or you can focus on the image through the scope and on the reticle. The Spectre seems to focus at about 5 feet, and your NV device isn't going to spend a lot of time focused at 5 feet. If you have a dual tube NV system, you can focus the tube over your dominant eye to the scope, and keep your other tube focused to your target, at least that way you'd only be half blind. If you used an LPVO with night vision, you would run into the same problem. But LPVOs are scopes, and scopes have adjustable diopter. Spin the diopter adjustment out a few turns until you no longer need to change focus on the NV device, and you're up and running. Keep it like that until the sun comes up. This is something you can do with a magnified prism scope like the Vortex Spitfire Gen 2, but you cannot do it with any of the models of the Trigicon ACOG, as far as I know, and you can't do it with the Elcan Spectre. So unless you're okay with changing the focus on your night vision device every time you look through the optic and then back again every time you lower the optic, the Spectre does not work for night vision. The mounting position also becomes a problem. For normal use, you need about 2 inches of eye relief. For use with night vision, you need about 2 inches, plus about 4 to 6 for your NV device, plus another inch for your face. If the Spectre is mounted far enough back for use without NV, it's mounted too far back for comfortable use with NV, unless you're a very small person with a very long adjustable stock. An L-Can with a piggybacked red dot could work, but now you're just throwing good money after bad. Spending close to two grand on an optic, more like 2,500 once you get the piggyback set up, and now you've got a vestigial 1x setting on the scope you don't really need. So why not just go with an ACOG RMR stack or the fixed four power L-Can and a red dot? then it's basically just a Canadian ACOG. The Spectre DR1-4 with a red dot is way heavier than an ACOG with an RMR on it. A Trigicon TA-11 with an RMR will probably run you about as much as a Spectre, and it will work better in almost all respects, and it will weigh a lot less. And that's why there are so many used Spectres for sale on TaxSwap and ARFCOM and eBay. The Spectre has a lot of little annoying problems, and for $2,000 it can't afford to be less than perfect. For that price it needs to be like mana from heaven. The EOTech EXPS3 and the Aimpoint T2 are both fairly expensive sites, and they're both great, but I see a ton of EXPS3s for sale on the secondary market, and almost no T2s. I think the reason for that is pretty obvious. The EXPS3 gets a lot of hype. It's distinctive looking, it's in all the video games, and it has the allure of futuristic hologram technology. The actual sight itself is also great. Phenomenal performance under night vision, extremely low parallax, and a fast reticle that looks great under a magnifier. It's awesome. But there are downsides that you don't appreciate until you actually get your hands on it. EOTechs are big, they're heavy, the reticle is fuzzier than it looks in pictures and video games, the battery life isn't great, and you can't leave it on all the time, not even if you want to. And on the other end of the spectrum, the Aimpoint T2. There's nothing exciting about the T2, so it doesn't get hyped up. And if you buy one, there's no glaring faults that will make you want to sell it. A lot of boys bought EOTechs based on reputation and sold them based on size, battery life, or reticle issues. Guys who buy T2s are doing so based on their experience with the last piece of shit red dot they owned, and then they keep them forever. 
The Elcan Spectre is a really good scope. It's got a lot of kick-ass features and qualities, but it's also the wrong scope for everybody. Seriously, there's not a single person out there who is best served by an Elcan Spectre DR1-4. Except maybe an M240 Bravo Gunner, but that guy is at the mercy of military logistics and doesn't get to make his own choices. Hey! Nice! Drip! I just like it, bros. By the way, you guys can find me on Subscribestar if you would like to support this channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.